Hi, everyone. This is Paul Yeager, and this is the MTOM Show Podcast, a production of Iowa PBS and the Market to Market TV show. It's time to meet our second farmer for the 2024 growing season, and we're going to go to Michigan, and we're going to go to the Mint, right in the center of the Mint. Mason, Michigan is where we're going to find Don Osterley, or Donald. I'll refer to him in both. He farms with his brother, who they both farmed with their father and grandfather, and now the kids are getting involved, so we're going to lay out the family lineage here uh, in, the, in the Michigan area for Don and his family. And our connection comes via Angie Setzer, market analyst on the TV show Market to Market. So thanks to Angie. We'll start talking about her in a minute, but we're going to find out a little bit about the crop makeup. And I do have a question in the middle when I talk about sentiment. Uh, there are surveys, sentiment surveys. I didn't do a good job of explaining that to Don. So my apologies there. And we hope you stick with us uh, for this series. We'll talk again in the middle of the growing season. And then at the end, if you want to go back and watch any of our episodes, you can like and subscribe and then go into the archives and find out what we've been chatting about uh, through the world of agriculture. Feedback for me, that's easy to do. Send it in an email to paul.yeager, that's Y-E-A-G-E-R, at iowapbs.org. Now, let's get to meet Don Osterley. The first question is, Angie Setzer, really? Nobody else would, would take your, your money? What What's your relationship? What's I know what my relationship is like with the goddess of grain. Don, what's yours? Uh, so technically, um, technically she works for me, but we're more or less friends. <laughs> so we, uh, so we touch base probably, uh, once a week, at least during, during the slow periods, just to chat and see, see what's going on with the markets. What have the conversations been like, uh, the last two to three years when nothing seems to be normal? Uh, well, the last two, three years, we spent the time uh, usually talking about how we got it wrong from the time before when we talked. So <laughs> we're like, is it going down? Well, yeah, we think it's going down. Nope, it didn't go down. It went up. So we were, we were, or er, Angie's probably better, but I am notorious for uh, uh, being on the wrong side. So <laughs> I, uh, and that's when she comes back and says, she I comes told back you so? and helps me out. Yeah, no, she doesn't say, I told you so. She gets me leaning in the right direction. So when I say, well, well, I got a good idea. She's like, yes, sure. That's an idea, but let's not sure it's a good one. <laughs> what is, let's just set it up, I guess, before we get back into more of, of you, let's talk about you, Don, where are you, where are you located? Yep. So we're located in Mason, Michigan, which is just south of Lansing, basically the, um, right in the middle, almost in the middle of the state. Um, and so, um, oh, it's raining right now. See, that's the again. fun weather of Michigan, right? Yeah. Yep. We are cloudy and rainy or we're dry and cloudy. So, um but yeah, we're in the middle. We've got pretty decent dirt here, not like the mid mid Midwest, but uh we got pretty decent dirt here. So um it's fun to farm here. What is the farm makeup then? Uh so we have uh corn, soybeans, wheat, alfalfa. We raise a little bit of canola and we also have a feedlot. Big feedlot or one of them hobby lots? Uh, uh, pretty big for around here. It's 1500 head of Holstein steers. So not big for probably around your area, but it's pretty big for around here. It's big enough for anybody. That's, that's nothing to sneeze at right there. And I'm guessing that might yeah, be one of those reasons us. you're always having conversations with Angie. Yeah. Yep. And it was really nice when Carl entered because we get a little more of the cattle side now. So that really helps me out. What have the crops been like the last, uh, what was last year's crop? Did you catch enough rain or did, uh, could you have always used more? Uh, last year we caught enough rain. We had one dry spell for about five weeks, uh, the end of May, uh, first part of June, that really basically anything that was planted after May 20th really didn't come up till 
around the last week in June. So we saw a huge decline in yields for that last portion of the crop that was planted. Even though it was planted in a decent time for around here, you know, May, May 22nd, May 24th, it, it just sat there in the ground. So beans took, beans took a really big hit off of that. Cause beans corn managed, but beans took a big hit because beans always are that whole, like they don't like wet feet, cold feet. They, they just, they don't take, if they don't take off, they struggle. Yeah. And that's, that was the problem. They didn't take off. So then they, that portion of the farm, just of the ground just struggled all year. What? So beans were down a little bit. What is usually the first day of planting for you for corn or beans? So we like to start anytime after April 15th. So if we actually thought we'd be going today, but then the weather changed (laughs) and it rained last night and it's, sprinkling again right now is there anything in the ground yeah we got 44 acres of hay in the ground okay. this spring hey <laughs> but that's all we've got uh a few of the neighbors got some um west of us got a little bit in there is there's not a, you i don't think you could call anything in the ground because it's just basically a few guys got the planter going to make sure it worked and that's pretty much it around here and you were hoping to be that one today to get rolling make sure things worked and if yeah you can yeah we were work. hoping the one today to get rolling but uh no mother nature had other plans are you by yourself or do you have help uh family wise uh nope we have a lot of family involved so i have um my i have a twin brother he's a partner and my dad were partners in the operation and then i have uh both of our wives work for the farm and then there's uh my son russ's son and my daughter work for the farm so we have well you can come back and add up that's a lot and how old are the kids that are in now that third generation so they're just finishing um uh college so 20 uh, one's 20, one's 20, two or 20 and one's 23. You're going to have, I can't let my wife watch this now that I had to <laughs> struggle through the ages. <laughs> we won't worry about the ages and I want to ask you names or anything like that. Uh, was the plan yeah, all along good. when they went away to come back? Yeah. So they're actually, um, they go right to MSU here and, um, well, my nephew, he uh, got an agribusiness management degree from Penn State, um, but he just did that online because that started with the whole COVID time. And then my son is getting a crop and soil science degree from MSU and my daughter a livestock degree from MSU. So so we have things covered pretty well. I'm guessing that uh, livestock operation might change then. Yeah, she's wondering when the next barn is going up. <laughs> <laughs> well that's always that i said not quite yet well what was that conversation like when you said to your dad when you and your brother said you were coming back was that always your plan yeah we always uh after we got over uh being small kids and first we were going to be nfl football players then nba basketball players when we got a little more height to us once we got past that then then we always wanted to come back to the farm I've worked on the farm since I could walk, so we we have a blast with it. And your dad, uh, did he did he work with other people too, or did he start this whole thing? Yeah, so he farmed with his dad. So my dad and my grandpa had the farm originally, and then my grandpa retired, and then my dad, brother, and I have the farm. And so then your kids would make fourth so. generation. Yeah, actually, on. Um, one of the farms will be fifth okay. generation. So yep. in those generations, there's always those conversations of what are we going to do? So did you uh, say to your dad and granddad, this is my idea. When is this, when are we going to start planting canola? Or when are we going to put up a hog barn or a cattle barn? What was your yeah. contribution so, to that? So we were, uh, uh, so when we started, Russ and I, we actually, started a little 
we used all dad's equipment. You know, we mooshed as much from him as we could and we started renting our own ground. So, which was good because he made us, um, he made, that made us make decisions. And Russ and I were actually the ones that started uh, putting some cattle in. We bought an old dairy farm, tore all the free stalls out and started putting some feeders in. And then when we wanted to add more feeders, we went and enlisted dad because he had more money. Ah, the first bank of dad helped out a little. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, yeah. how active is he now? You say he's involved. I mean, has he basically did the keys completely over to you? So, and Russ? Uh, so we, we like to call it semi-retirement. So he comes there uh, when he, and whenever he's in town, which is a lot, I mean, he, they take a couple of vacations a year, but he comes every day, um, see what's going on and, and work, but he's not making, he's not really involved in the day-to-day -day decisions. So he's kind of let that go. And with you and Russ, so, uh, who's, who's, I mean, you have Angie as a marketing, so who's, who's mechanical, oh, who's yeah. agronomy, how do you divvy up So those? Russ, so both of us got a crop and soil degree, so we kind of divvy up agronomy together because we both like it. And then I take care of all the marketing and the um, accounting and business end, and Russ handles all the equipment and the employees. It's a heck of a so, good divide right there. Yeah, it works out. We get along very well, so it works out really good. Let's go to the 23 crop. How much is left to market? Uh, uh, not much. Only what's going through the the cattle right now. So we have we are generally um, we generally aggressive sellers. So we like to sell a lot. I like to sell a lot before fall gets here. Then I don't have to worry about it. So if we can if we can if we can hit what we want, then then we just go ahead and pull the trigger and sell. So then, have you already done that for twenty four? We're working on that right now. We're a little bit behind what we would normally be. We have some sold. Um, let me see your corn. We're probably we're probably twenty twenty five percent sold on corn. Probably about the same for beans. So right now we we generally like we do a little bit more on a spring run up, which we haven't seen. I mean, there's been a little, but this week is the lat is we the first for. we've seen in quite a while for run ups. And that's just yeah. trying to catch back yeah. up to where we were. Yeah. Well, I told Angie, I mean, we were just talking uh, yesterday, I think. And I'm like, this is more like, you know, back in the nineties when, it, you know, it was a penny here, two cents there, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm not used to this after the last couple of years, you know, a off day was a nickel, you know, where now it's, you get a two cent. If you get a two cent change, I mean, you're, it's feels like it moved. Yeah. The yawning uh, so. of uh, that's what it used to be. Uh, or now uh, this year. Oh uh, yeah. Looking at the, the prices yeah. in the past. Okay. So, yeah, so is that, yeah. are you even like corn and beans marketed when you say 25%? Uh, so we we raise just a little bit more corn okay. than beans. So we'll have about uh, about twenty percent more corn than we do beans. So just w with the feed and everything. Do you find so, um, that has been a strategy you've employed for a long time? Uh, we usually uh, um, we're actually usually a little bit closer to. Um, even on corn and soybeans, we, last fall was so wet, we got 500 acres of, uh, we usually plant almost 2,000 acres of wheat. And so we got a lot of extra wheat ground, soybean stubble that we're putting back into corn. So normally it'd be a little bit closer than what it is, but it's just the way it is from the fall that we were given. Are you in a position each year to flip acres if need be? Oh yeah. Yeah. So if we're making a lot more money on one, then we'll go, then we'll, we'll plant more of one and less of the other. It's not, so, so is fall nitrogen a thing in your area? Like it is in Iowa and in parts of. Northern? Uh, not really. Guys really don't put fall nitrogen on everything goes on in the spring. So you're either putting on 
and hydrous in the spring, urea, or there's a few guys that still use 28%, but mainly, mainly it's anhydrous and urea. And so that allows That'll you go on in the spring pre plant. That allows you the flexibility then. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. If nitrogen gets way high, then you just put a little more, a little more of the other in. So if beans price isn't that good, then you just put put a little more corn in. The fertilizer is not too bad. Is there a day you like to lock in what your acreage is going to be for the coming year? So we'll start in January. We'll pretty much know what we're going to do. So we'll have all the costs in by then. So we'll we'll know what we're going to do. And that, again, is the whole look at the hot hand. If we have some stuff yeah. we want to flip, we're going there. Yep. Yep. There'll be some ground that, that, uh, we, we like to keep a little bit of a, a rotation, but we're fine if we have to go two years corn on some of the stuff. So you said, uh, a few hundred acres on wheat or was it a, th- a 1200 on wheat last year? What are you, what's your acreage number breakdown looking at for this year? So we're, um, this year we're, we're sitting right around 5,000 acres of corn um 4100 acres of beans uh 1400 acres of canola and then uh we only got about 500 acres of wheat in is the wheat already in is it winter or is it spring yep it's all winter wheat around here yeah yep do the canola when does that get planted so that gets planted uh usually we plant that after our wheat um in august but since we only got 500 acres in, um, we're going to try something new this year, and we're going to plant some after soybeans. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. So hopefully by June 1, if everything goes fine, you'll have the canola in? Uh, well, uh, it's winter oh, canola. Oh, winter canola. So you're saying in so, October, November yep. is when you would plant it. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. We'll actually, we like to plant it in August is when we like to plant it. And this is only our, this will be our fourth year doing it. Um, Cause they just started receiving canola uh, at a local elevator here. So, um, so this is our fourth year. So we've always planted after wheat before in August, but now we're gonna try it after soybeans this fall, see how it goes. And what made you so, enter canola? Price. So. <laughs> It was uh, it's down a little bit this year, but you know the previous years to this, the price was really good. So, which was nice because it, it gave you time to learn how to do it and still not pay for your mistakes. <laughs> so you could still you could still make some money on it, even though you screwed up something. Prior to the nearby elevator taking the canola, where were you taking it? We didn't have any. So until until ADM here started taking canola, we didn't we didn't we didn't. We didn't do any. Do you know what? So I guess guys said it's been a, I can't remember how many years they said it's been since there's been canola around here before ADM started again. And the, is a, is what, are, what are your outlets? Cause you're not necessarily near a river uh, that ships, but what are your options? So the canola, they take it right. Are you talking about yeah. canola? The canola, they, um, we deliver it at a local ADM and they put it on a train and haul it over to Windsor and they have a crushing plant in Windsor. And then where does your, so they're getting canola for a lot less transportation than what they normally would for that plant. And then what are they, where does your corn and beans, what are your options for outlets for them? So part of the corn goes through the cattle. um, And then part of our corn will go through, um, there's two local outlets. Uh, ethanol plants that they go to and every now and then we'll send some to uh, some of the pig places on the west side of the state or there's some dairies dairies up north of here so wherever we pretty much go wherever the market's calling for it but you have options you're not stuck and married to just one yeah no no the both ethanol plants are the equal distance from our grain facility so <laughs> We can go either That's way. That's just like our guy in Nebraska. Same thing. He's like, it's one mile more here or two miles more there. So yeah, that's that the same. sounds like the and same for like, you. It's like, yeah, same. One's a little bit easier because of the highway, but 
I, I'm not driving the truck. So, I mean, <laughs> we're going wherever it pays the best. Now, I know you're closer to Michigan State, but the University of Michigan has their sentiment. And I know that farmer sentiment through Purdue is always kind of hit or miss. What's the farmer sentiment where you're at, Donald, this year? Uh, towards Michigan? Well, not not necessarily to the University of Michigan, but just farming in general. How are you feeling? Um, I guess uh, towards the college or towards uh, just... Uh, just agriculture in general. How are you feeling? You feeling like you got good markets? You have a good opportunity? Oh, oh, oh. oh or are you like, we're yeah. dry, um, we're not going to recover? No, no, we got plenty of moisture. There's some wet holes still holding water. So we got plenty of moisture and we're supposed to get some heat next week. So um, I think, I think we'll be in, well, I mean, the weather changes all the time, but if the forecast holds, we should be in pretty good shape. Because you're not in so a drought. Looks like you're not in a drought situation no. or coming out of it. You're, you're stocked. No. Yeah. We, we, we had that dry weather beginning of summer last summer. And then once it hit July, um, somebody turned the faucet on and then never shut it off. Thankfully, we did not get our average amount of snowfall this year. So we were lower. So it helped things dry out a little bit. So we're, we're in pretty good shape for moisture levels. We're a little, probably a little bit above, but which is fine for this time of year. Prices are what they are. We talked about, you know, you've already, you know, sold some stuff. Uh, you're not having to still market a lot of that old crap. So you have to feel good about that in the sense of 23. Yeah. It's now just that 24 with it. You're maybe a little farther behind and you're kind of a little more, a little more uh, type yeah. reaction. Yeah. The way the markets look, um, we're going to need at least a, an average yield to make our margins. So, which if we can get in um, the last week in April, next week, then we'll be in decent shape. We haven't got anything planted before. Last year, I think it, we started May 12th, and the year before that, we started May 10th. So if we get in in April this year, we'll, we'll, we're a couple weeks above the last two years. So we'll, we won't be complaining. Yeah, I've noticed around, I mean, I guess reading Angie's uh, either tweets or commentary where she talks about or just messages with her of, you know, super wet around her. Probably only when she makes yeah. you, right? You know, just when she texts you, hey, have you read my last one or whatever? <laughs> yep. You know, Angie, that's you got her right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you anticipate this year um, that you think Will you change any of your outlook on the cattle? Let's go to the cattle then for a moment, because we see these cattle on feed reports come back and we look at numbers and then we have yeah. viruses come through. What's your outlook or sentiment, I guess, on livestock? So the way we run our cattle, it it all depends on the price of um, the feeders and, and where the futures are. Because as soon, as soon as I book a load, we s sell three loads so we'll we can cash we can contract them right away so the price of feeders have really jumped up the last month month and a half here so we had some contracted to come in so those are fine but the next group i don't know if we'll get some any in in june or not so it'll be it, it, the feeders are pretty high <laughs> Where so. do you normally go for to try to find feeders? So I have um I've got a guy I usually get you know, seven eight hundred a year from, and then the rest of them uh, we buy through UPI here in Michigan, United Producers. And I'm guessing they're telling you it's so. the price is what the price is. Where's there's, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Well, they got they got sellers on the other side that want the yeah. most. That they can get, and I don't blame them. I mean, there was a couple. There was some lean years there where they weren't getting much, and so um, it took a real took a real jump. The last couple prices I got have have been much closer, so I think we'll eventually come get close to where where we can continue to buy some. 
but we just may have to go a month or so without getting any. Well, when we chat in July, we'll see how a how the trucks rolled. We'll see if you beat that to uh, get stuff planted got, by yeah. May one. <laughs> we got a lot to follow up with. I got a lot of notes here for our next conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be great if we got a lot in by May one. I'd be I'll be a happy camper in July. That'd be good. Sure. All right, Donald. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. No problem. New episodes of this podcast come out each and every Tuesday. Like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen or you can watch via our YouTube channel. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.